The Forgotten Books of Eden were in Book 2, starting with Chapter 11. Seth becomes head of the most happy and just tribe of people who ever lived. Verse 1. After the death of Adam and of Eve, Seth severed his children and his children's children from Cain's children. Cain and his seed went down and dwelt westward below the place where he had killed his brother Abel. But Seth and his children dwelt northwards upon the mountain of the cave of treasures in order to be near to their father Adam. And Seth the elder, tall and good, with a fine soul and of a strong mind, stood at the head of his people and tended them in innocent penitence and meekness, kindness, and did not allow one of them to go down to Cain's children. But because of their own purity, they were named children of mighty God Ahiah, and they were with Elohi Ahiah, instead of the host of angels who fell. For they continued in praises to mighty God Ahiah, and in singing psalms unto him, in their cave, the cave of treasures. Then Seth stood before the body of his father Adam, and of his mother Eve, and prayed night and day, and asked for mercy towards himself and his children and that when he had some difficult dealing with a child, he would give him counsel. But Seth and his children did not like earthly work, but gave themselves to heavenly things, for they had no other thought than praises, doxologies, and psalms of mighty God Ahia. Therefore did they at all times hear the voices of angels, praising and glorifying mighty God Ahia from within the garden, or when they were sent by Ahia on an errand, or when they were going up to heaven. For Seth and his children, by reason of their own purity, heard and saw those angels. Then again, the garden was not far above them, but only some fifteen spiritual cubics. Now one spiritual cubic answers to three cubics of a man, altogether forty-five cubics. Seth and his children dwelt on the mountain below the garden. They sowed not, neither did they reap. They wrought no food for the body, not even wheat, but only offerings. They ate of the fruit and of trees well flavored that grew on the mountain where they dwelt. Then Seth often fasted every forty days, as did also his eldest children. For the family of Seth smelled the smell of the trees in the garden when the wind blew that way. They were happy, innocent, without sudden fear. There was no jealousy, no evil action, no hatred among them. There was no animal passion, for no mouth among them went forth either foul words or curse, neither evil counsel nor fraud. For the men of that time never swore, but under hard circumstances, when men must swear, they swore by the blood of Abel, the just. But they constrained their children and their women every day in the cave to fast and pray and to worship the Most High, Ahia. They blessed themselves in the body of their father, Adam, and anointed themselves with it. And they did so until the end of Seth drew near. Chapter 12, Seth's family affairs, his death, the headship of Enos, how the outcast branch of Adam's family fared. Verse 1, Then Seth the just called his sons Enos and Canaan, son of Enos, and Mahalalel, son of Canaan, and said unto them, As my end is near, I wish to build a roof over the altar on which gifts are offered. They hearkened to his commandment and went out, all of them, both old and young, and worked hard at it, and built a beautiful roof over the altar. And Seth's thought in so doing was that a blessing should come upon his children on the mountain, and that he should present an offering for them before his death. Then when the building of the roof was completed, he commanded them to make offerings, they worked diligently at these and brought them to Seth, their father, who took them and offered them upon the altar and prayed El Elohi to accept their offerings, to have mercy on their souls of 
his children and to keep them from the hand of Satan. Excuse my puppy, sorry. And El Elohi Ahiah accepted his offering and sent his blessing upon him and upon his children. And El Elohi Ahiah made a promise to Seth, saying, At the end of the great five days, excuse my puppy, sorry for the interruption. Sorry for the interruption of my puppies. We're going to repeat verse 5. Then when the building of the roof was completed, he commanded them to make offerings. They worked diligently at these and brought them to Seth, their father, who took them and offered them up upon the altar, and prayed Elohiah to accept their offerings, to have mercy on the souls of his children, and to keep them from the hand of Satan. And El Elohi Ahiah accepted his offering and sent his blessing upon him and upon his children. And then El Elohi Ahiah made a promise to Seth, saying, At the end of the great five days and a half, meaning 5,500 years, concerning which I have made a promise to thee and to thy father, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. Then Seth and his children and his children's children met together and came down from the altar and went to the cave of treasures, where they prayed and blessed themselves in the body of our father Adam and anointed themselves with it. They set the board in the cave of treasures a few days and then suffered sufferings unto death. Then Enos, his firstborn son, came unto him with Canaan his son and Mahalalel, Canaan's son, and Jared, the son of Mahalalel and Enoch, Jared's son, with their wives and children to receive a blessing from Seth. Then Seth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Abel the just, saying, I beg of you, my children, not to let one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain. Make no fellowship with the children of Cain, the murderer and the sinner who killed his brother. For you know, my children, that we flee from him and from all his sin, with all our might, because he killed his brother Abel. After having said this, Seth blessed Enos, his firstborn son, and commanded him habitually to minister in purity before the body of our father Adam all the days of his life, and also to go at times to the altar which he said had built, and he commanded him to feed his people in righteousness, in judgment and purity all the days of his life. Then the limbs of Seth were loosened, his hands and feet lost all power, his mouth became dumb and unable to speak, and he gave up the ghost and died the day after his nine hundred and twelfth year, on the twenty-seventh day of the month Abib. Enoch being then twenty years old, then they wound up carefully the body of Seth, and embalmed him with sweet spices, and laid him in the cave of treasures on the right side of our father Adam's body, and they mourned for him forty days. They offered gifts for him as they had done for our father Adam. After the death of Seth, Enos rose at the head of his people, whom he fed in righteousness and judgment, and his father had commanded him. But by the time Enos was eight hundred and twenty years old, Cain had a large progeny, for they married frequently, being given to animal lust, until the land below the mountain was filled with them. Chapter 13 Among the children of Cain there was much robbery, murder, and sin. Verse 1 In those days lived Lamech the blind, who was of the son of Cain. He had a son whose name was Atun, and they too had much cattle. But Lamech was in the habit of sending them to feed with a young shepherd, who tended them, and who, when coming home in the evening, wept before his grandfather, and before his father Atun, and his mother Hazina, and said to them, As for me, I cannot feed those cattle alone, lest one rob me of some was much robbery. I'm sorry. Alone, lest one rob me of some of them, or kill me for the sake of them. For among the children of Cain there was much robbery, murder, and sin. Then Lamech pitied him, and he said, Truly he 
when alone might be overpowered by the men of this place. So Lamech arose, took a bow he had kept ever since he was a youth, ere he became blind, and he took large arrows and smooth stones and sling which he had, and went to the field with the young shepherd and placed himself behind the cattle. Now the young shepherd watched the cattle, thus the Lamech many days. Meanwhile, Cain, ever since mighty God Ahiah had cast him off, and had cursed him with trembling and terror, could neither settle nor find rest in any one place, but wandered from place to place like a vagabond. In his wanderings, he came to Lamech's wives and asked them about him. They said to him, He is in the field with the cattle. And Cain went to look for him, and as he came into the field, the young shepherd heard the noise he made, and the cattle herding together from before him. Then said he to Lamech, My God, is that a wild beast or a robber? And Lamech said to him, Make me understand which way he looks when he comes up. And Lamech bent his bow, placed an arrow on it, and fitted a stone in the sling. And when Cain came out from the open country, the shepherd said to Lamech, Shoot, behold, he is coming. And Lamech shot at Cain with an arrow and hit him in his side. And Lamech struck him with a stone from his sling that fell upon his face and knocked out both his eyes. And Cain fell at once and died. And Lamech and the young shepherd came up to him and found him lying on the ground. And the young shepherd said to him, It is Cain, our grandfather, whom thou hast killed. Oh, my God! Then was Lamech sorry for it, and from the bitterness of his regret had clapped his hands together and struck with his flat palm the head of the youth who fell as if dead. But Lamech thought it was a fent, so he took up a stone and smote him, and smashed his head until he died. Chapter 14 Time like an ever-rolling stream bears away another generation of men. Verse 1 When Enos was nine hundred years old, all the children of Seth and of Canaan, and his firstborn with their wives and children, gathered around him, asking for a blessing from him. He then prayed over them and blessed them, and adjured them by the blood of Abel, the just, saying to them, Let not one of your children go down from this holy mountain, and let them make no fellowship with the children of Cain the murderer. And Eno then Enos called his son Canaan, and said to him, See, my son, and set thy heart on thy people, and establish them in righteousness and in innocence and stand ministering before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life. After this, Enos entered into rest, aged nine hundred and eighty-five years. And Canaan wound him up and laid him in the cave of treasures on the left of his father Adam, and made offerings for him after the custom of his fathers. Chapter 15 The offspring of Adam continue to keep the cave of treasures as a family shrine. Verse 1. After the death of Enoch, Canaan stood at the head of his people in righteousness and innocence, as his father had commanded him. He also continued to minister before the body of Adam, inside the cave of treasures. And when he had lived nine hundred and ten years, suffering and affliction came upon him. And when he was about to enter into rest, all the fathers with their wives and children came to him, and he blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Abel, the just, saying to them, Let not one among you go down from this holy mountain, and make no fellowship with the children of Cain the murderer. Mahalalel, his firstborn son, received this commandment from his father, who blessed him and died. Then Mahalalel embalmed him with sweet spices and laid him in the cave of treasures with his fathers, and they made offerings for him after the custom of their fathers. Chapter 16 The good branch of the family is still afraid of the children of Cain. Verse 1 Then Mahalalel stood over his people and fed them in righteousness and innocence, and watched them to see they held no intercourse with the children of Cain. He also continued in the cave of treasures, praying and ministering before the body of our Father Adam, asking 
mighty God hired for mercy on himself and on his people until he was 870 years old when he fell sick. And all his children gathered unto him to see him and ask for his blessing on them all ere he left this world. Then Mahalalel arose and sat on his bed, his tears streaming down his face, and he called his eldest son, Jared, who came to him. He then kissed his face and said to him, O Jared, my son, I adjure thee by him who made heaven and earth, to watch over thy people and to feed them in righteousness and in innocence, and not to let one of them go down from this holy mountain to the children of Cain, lest he perish with them. Hear, O my son, hereafter there shall come a great destruction upon this earth on account of them. Mighty God Ahia will be angry with the world and will destroy them with waters. But I also know that thy children will not hearken to thee and that they will go down from this mountain and hold intercourse with the children of Cain and that they shall perish with them. O oh, my son, teach them and watch over them that no guilt attach to thee on their account. Mahalalel said moreover to his son Jared, When I die, embalm my body and lay it in the cave of treasures by the bodies of my fathers. Then stand thou by my body and pray to mighty God Ahia and take care of them and fulfill thy ministry before them until thou enterest into rest thyself. Mahalalel then blessed all his children and then lay down on his bed and entered into rest like his father's. But when Jared saw that his father Mahalalel was dead, he wept and sorrowed and embraced and kissed his hands and his feet. And so did all his children. And his children embalmed him carefully and laid him by the bodies of his fathers. Then they arose and mourned for him forty days. Chapter 17. Jared turns Martinet. He is lured away to the land of Cain, where he sees many voluptuous sights. Jared barely escapes with a clean heart. First 1. Then Jared kept his father's commandment and arose like a lion over his people. He fed them in righteousness and innocence and commanded them to do nothing without his counsel. He was afraid concerning them, lest they should go to the children of Cain. Wherefore did he give them orders repeatedly, and continue to do so until the end of the 485th year of his life? At the end of these set years there came unto him this sign. As Jared was standing like a lion before the bodies of his fathers, praying and warning his people, Satan envied him, and wrought a beautiful apparition, because Jared would not let his children do aught without his counsel. Satan then appeared to him with thirty men of his host in the form of handsome men, Satan himself being the elder and tallest among them, with a fine beard, then stood at the mouth of the cave and called out Jared from within it. He came out to them and found them looking like fine men, full of light, and of great beauty. He wondered at their beauty and at their looks, and thought within himself whether they might not be of the children of Cain. He said also in his heart, As the children of Cain cannot come up to the height of this mountain, and none of them is so handsome as these appear to be, and among these men there is not one of my kindred. They must be strangers. Then Jared and they exchanged a greeting, and he said, to the elder among them, My father explain to me the wonder that is in thee, and tell me who these are with thee, for they look to me like strange men. Then the elder began to weep, and the rest wept with him. And he said to Jared, I am Adam, who El Elohihiah made first, and this is Abel, my son, who was killed by his brother Cain, into whose heart Satan put to murder him. Then this is my son Seth, whom I asked Ahiah, who gave him to me, to comfort me instead of Abel. Then this one is my son Enos, son of Seth, and that other one is Canaan, son of Enos, and that other one is Mahalalel, son of Canaan, thy father. But Jared remained wondering at their appearance and at the speech of the elder to him. 
Then the elder said to him, Marvel not, my son, we live in the land north of the garden which Ahia created before the world. He would not let us live there, but he placed us inside the garden below which you are now dwelling. But after that I transgressed, he made me to come out of it, and I was left to dwell in this cave. Great and sore troubles came upon me. And when my death drew near, I commanded my son Seth to tend his people well. And this my commandment is to be handed from one to another unto the end of the generations to come. But, Jared, my son, we live in beautiful regions, while you live here in misery, as this thy father Mahalalel informed thee, telling me that a great flood will come and overwhelm the whole earth. Therefore, my son, fearing for your sakes, I rose and took my children with me, and came hither for us to visit thee and thy children. But I found thee standing in this cave weeping, and thy children scattered about this mountain, in the heat and in misery. But, O oh, my son, as we missed our way and came as far as this, we found other men below this mountain who inhabit a beautiful country, full of trees and of fruits and of all manner of verdure. It is like a garden. So, so that when we found them, we thought they were you, until thy father Mahalalel told me they were no such thing. Now, therefore, my son, Hearken to my counsel, and go down to them, thou and thy children. You will rest from all this suffering in which you are. But if thou wilt not go down to them, then arise, take thy children, and come with us to our garden. You shall live in our beautiful land, and you shall rest from all this trouble which thou and thy children are now bearing. But Jared, when he heard this discourse from the elder, wondered and went hither and thither, but at that moment he found not one of his children. And he answered and said to the elder, Why have you hidden yourselves until this day? And the elder replied, If thy father had not told us, we should not have known it. And Jared believed his words were true. So that elder said to Jared, Wherefore didst thou turn about so and so? And he said, I was seeking one of my children, to tell him about my going with you, and about their coming down to those about whom thou hast spoken to me. When the elder heard Jared's intention, he said to him, Let alone that purpose at present, and come with us. Thou shalt see our country. If the land is which we dwell pleases thee, we and thy shall return hither, and take thy family with us. But if our country does not please thee, thou shalt come back to thine own place. And the elder urged Jared to go before one of his children came to counsel him otherwise. Jared then came out of the cave and went with them and among them. And they comforted him until they came to the top of the mountain of the sons of Cain. Then said the elder to one of his companions, We have forgotten something by the mouth of the cave, and that is the chosen garment we had brought to clothe Jared with him. He then said to one of them, Go back, thou some one, and we will wait for thee here until thou come back. Then will we clothe Jared, and he shall be like us, good, handsome, and fit to come with us into our country. Then that one went back, and when he was a short distance off, the elder called to him and said to him, Tarry thou until I come up and speak to thee. And he stood still. And the elder went up to him and said to him, One thing we forgot at the cave, it is this, to put out the lamp that burns inside it, above the bodies that are therein, and come back to us. Quick. That one went, and the elder came back to his fellows and to Jared. And they came down from the mountain, and Jared with them. And they stayed by a fountain of water, near the houses of the children of Cain, and waited for their companion until he brought the garment for Jared. He then who went back to the cave put out the lamp and came to them and brought a phantom with him and showed it them. And when Jared saw it, he wondered at the beauty and grace thereof, and rejoiced in his heart, believing it was all true. But while they were staying there, three of them went into his into houses of the sons of Cain and said to them, Bring us to day some food by 
the fountain of water for us and our companions to eat. But when the sons of Cain saw them, they wondered at them and thought, These are beautiful to look at, and such as we never saw before. So they rose and came with them to the fountain of water to see their companions. They found them so very handsome that they cried aloud about their places for others to gather together and come and look at these beautiful beings. Then they gathered around them both men and women. Then the elder said to them, We are strangers in your land. Bring us some food, good food and drink, you and your women, to refresh ourselves with you. When those men heard these words of the elder, every one of Cain's sons brought his wife, and another brought his daughter. And so, many women came to them, every one addressing Jared either for himself or for his wife, all alike. But when Jared saw that they did, his very soul wrenched itself from them. Neither would he taste of their food or of their drink. The other saw him as he wrenched himself from them and said to him, Be not sad. I am the great elder as thou shalt see me. Do, do thyself in like manner. Then he spread his hands and took one of the women and five of his companions did the same before Jared, that he should do as they did. But when Jared saw them working infamy, he wept and said in his mind, My fathers never did the like. He then spread his hands and prayed with a fervent heart and with much weeping and entreated Elohia hired to deliver him from their hands. No sooner did Jerry begin to pray than the elder fled with his companions, for they could not abide in a place of prayer. When Jerry turned round about, could not see them, but found himself standing in the midst of the children of Cain. He then wept and said, O Ahia, destroy me not with this race, concerning which my fathers have warned me. For now, O Ahia, my king, I was thinking that those who appeared unto me were my fathers, but I have found them out to be devils, who allured me by this beautiful apparition until I believed them. But now, I ask thee, O Elohi, to deliver me from this race among whom I am now staying, as thou didst deliver me from those devils. Send thy angel to draw me out of this mist of them, for I have not myself power to escape from among them. When Jared had ended his prayer, mighty God high sent his angel in the midst of them, who took Jared and set him upon the mountain, and showed him the way, gave him counsel, and then departed from him. Chapter 18 Confusion in the Cave of Treasures Miraculous Preach of the dead Adam. Verse 1. The children of Jared were in the habit of visiting him hour after hour to receive his blessing and to ask his advice for everything. They did. And when he had a work to do, they did it for him. But this time when they went into the cave, they found not Jared, but they found the lamp put out and the bodies of the fathers thrown about. And voices came from them by the power of mighty God Ahia, that said, Satan in an apparition has deceived our son, wishing to destroy him, as he destroyed our son Cain. They said also, Ahia El Elohi of heaven and earth, deliver our son from the hand of Satan, who wrought a great and false apparition before him. They also spake of other matters, by the power of mighty God Ahia. But when the children of Jared heard these voices, they feared and stood weeping for their father, for they knew not what had befallen him. And they wept for him day that day until the setting of the sun. Then came Jared with a woeful countenance, wretched in mind and body, and sorrowful at having been separated from the bodies of his fathers. But as he was drawing near to the cave, his children saw him and hastened to the cave and hung around his neck, crying and saying to him, Father, where hast thou been, and why hast thou left us, as thou wast not wont to do? And again, Father, when thou didst disappear, the lamp over the bodies of our fathers went out. The bodies were thrown about, and voices came from them. 
When Jared heard this, he was sorry and went into the cave and there found the bodies thrown about, the lamp put out and the fathers themselves praying for his deliverance from the hand of Satan. Then Jared fell upon the bodies and embraced them and said, O oh, my fathers, through your intercession, that mighty God of high deliver me from the hand of Satan. And I beg you, will ask El Elohim Haya to keep me and to hide me from him until the day of my death. Then all the voices ceased, save the voice of our father Adam, who spake to Jared by the power of mighty God Ahiah, just as one would speak to his fellow, saying, O oh, Jared, my son, offer gifts to mighty God Ahiah for having delivered thee from the hand of Satan, and when thou bringest those offerings, so be it that thou offerest them on the altar on which I did offer. Then also beware of Satan, for he deluded me many a time with his apparitions, wishing to destroy me. But mighty God of high delivered me out of his hand. Command thy people that they be on their guard against him, and never cease to offer up gifts to mighty God of high. Then the voice of Adam also became silent. And Jared and his children wondered at this. Then they laid the bodies as they were at first. And Jared and his children stood praying the whole of that night until break of day. Then Jared made an offering and offered it up on the altar as Adam commanded him. And as he went up to the altar, he prayed to El Elohim for mercy and for forgiveness of his sin concerning the lamp going out. The mighty God Ahai appeared unto Jared on the altar and blessed him and his children and accepted their offerings and commanded Jared to take up the sacred fire from the altar and with it to light the lamp that shed light on the body of Adam. Chapter 19 The Children of Jared are Led Astray The mighty God Ahai revealed to him again the promise he had made to Adam. He explained to him that fifty five hundred years, and revealed unto him the mystery of his coming upon the earth. And mighty God Ahia said to Jared, As to that fire which thou hast taken from the altar to light the lamp withal, let it abide with you to give light to the bodies, and let it not come out of the cave, until the body of Adam comes out of it. But Jared, take care of the fire, that it burn bright in the lamp, Neither go thou again out of the cave until thou receivest an order through a vision and not in an apparition, when seen by thee. Then command again thy people not to hold intercourse with the children of Cain, and not to learn their ways. For I, El Elohi, Ahiah, who loves not hatred and works of iniquity. El Elohi Ahiah gave also many other commandments to Jared and blessed him, and then withdrew his word from him. Then Jared drew near with his children, took some fire, and came down to the cave, and lighted the lamp before the body of Adam, and he gave his people commandments of mighty God Ahiah had told him to do. This sign happened to Jared at the end of his 450th year, as did also many other wonders we do not record, but we record only this one for shortness' sake and in order not to lengthen our narrative. And Jared continued to teach his children eighty years. But after that they began to transgress the commandments he had given them, and to do many things without his counsel. They began to go down from the holy mountain one after another, and to mix with the children of Cain, in foul fellowships. Now the reason for which the children of Jared went down the holy mountain is this that we will now reveal unto you. Chapter 20 Ravishing music, strong drink, loosed among the sons of Cain. They done colorful clothing. The children of Seth look on with longing eyes. They revolt from wise counsel. They descend the mountain into the valley of iniquity. They cannot ascend the mountain again. First 1 after Cain had gone down to the land of dark soil, and his children had multiplied therein, there was one of them whose name was Genan, son of Lamech, the blind who slew Cain. 
But as to this gunning, Satan came unto him in his childhood, and he made sundry trumpets and horns and string instruments, cymbals and palstries and lyrics and harps and flutes, and he played on them at all times and at every hour. And when he played on them, Satan came unto them, so that, that from among them were heard beautiful and sweet sounds that ravished the heart. Then he gathered companies upon companies to play on them. And when they played, it pleased well the children of Cain, who inflamed themselves with sin among themselves, and burnt as with fire, while Satan inflamed their hearts, one with another, and increased lust among them. Satan also taught Genan to bring strong drink out of corn, and this Genan used to bring together companies upon companies in drink houses, and brought into their hands all manner of fruit and flowers, and they drank together. Thus did this Genan multiply sin exceedingly. He also acted with pride, and taught the children of Cain to commit all manner of the grossest wickedness which they knew not, and put them up to manifold doings which they knew not. Then Satan, when he saw that they yielded to Ganon, and hearkened to him in everything, he told them, Rejoice greatly, increase Ganon's understanding, until he took iron and with it made weapons of war. And when they were drunk, hatred and murder increased among them. One man used violence against another to teach him evil takings, his children and defiling them before him. And when men saw they were overcome and saw others that were not overpowered, those who were beaten came to Ganon, took refuge with him, and he made them his confederates. Then sin increased among them greatly, until a man married his own sister, or daughter, or mother, and others, or the daughters of his father's sister, so that there was no more distinction of relationship, and they no longer knew what is iniquity, but did wickedly, and the earth was defiled with sin. And they angered mighty God Ahia, the judge, who had created them. But Ganon gathered together companies upon companies that played on horns and on all the other instruments we have already mentioned, at the foot of the holy mountain. And they did so in order that the children of Seth, who were on the holy mountain, should hear it. But when the children of Seth heard of the noise, they wandered and came by companies, and stood on the top of the mountain to look at those below. And they did thus a whole year. When at the end of that year, Ganon saw that they were being won over to him little by little. Satan entered into him and taught him to make dyeing stuffs for garments of diverse patterns, and made him understand how to dye crimson and purple and what not. And the sons of Cain, who wrought all this, and shone in beauty and gorgeous apparel, gathered together at the foot of the mountain in splendor, with horns and gorgeous dresses and horse races, committing all manner of abominations. Meanwhile, the children of Set, who were on the holy mountain, prayed and praised mighty God Ahia in their place of the host of angels, who had fallen, wherefore Ahia had called them angels because he rejoiced over them greatly. But after this, they no longer kept his commandment, nor held by the promise he had made to their fathers. But they relaxed from their fasting and praying, and from the counsel of Jared their father. And they kept on gathering together on the top of the mountain to look upon the children of Cain from morning until evening, and upon what they did, upon their beautiful dresses and ornaments, when the children of Cain looked up from below and saw the children of Seth standing in troops on the top of the mountain, and they called to them to come down to them. But the children of Seth said to them from above, We don't know the way. And Genan the son of Lamech heard them say that did not know the way, and he bethrotted himself how he might bring them down. And Satan appeared to him by night, saying, there is no way for them to come down from the mountain on which they dwell. But when they come to-morrow, say to them, Come you to the west, western side of the mountain, 
there you will find the way of a stream of water that comes down to the foot of the mountain between two hills come down that way to us and when it was day Ginnon blew the horns and beat the drums below the mountain as he was wont the children of set heard it and came as they used to do then Ginnon said to them from down below go to the western side of the mountain there you will find the way to come down and when the children of set heard these words from him they went back into the cave to jared to tell him all they had heard and when jared heard it he was grieved for he knew that they would transgress his counsel after this a hundred men of the children of set gathered together and said among themselves come let us go down to the children of cain and see what they do and enjoy ourselves with them but when jared heard these words of the hundred men his very soul was moved and his heart was grieved he then arose with great fever and stood in the midst of them and adjured them by the blood of abel the just let not one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain in in which our fathers have ordered us to dwell but when jared saw that they did not receive his words he said unto them my good and innocent and holy children know that when once you go down from this holy mountain hallelujah i will not allow you to return again to it he again adjured them saying i adjure by the death of our father adam and by the blood of abel of of seth of enos of canaan and of mahalilil to hearken to me and not to go down from this holy mountain for the moment you leave it you will be breath of life and of mercy and you shall no longer be called children of el elohi ahiah but children of the devil but they would not hearken to his words enoch at that time was already grown up and in his zeal for mighty god ahiah he arose and said hear me ye sons of seth small and small and great when you transgress the commandment of our fathers and go down from this holy mount holy mountain you shall not come up hither again for ever but they rose up against enoch and would not hearken to his words but went down from the holy mountain and when they looked at the daughters of cain and at their beautiful figures and at their hands and feet dyed with colors and tattooed in ornament in their faces the fire of sin was kindled in them then satan made them look most beautiful before the sons of seth as he also made the sons of seth appear of the fairest in the eyes of the daughters of cain so that the daughters of cain lusted after the sons of seth like ravenous beasts and the sons of seth after the daughters of cain until they committed abomination with them but after they had thus fallen into this defilement they returned by the way they had come and tried to ascend the holy mountain but they could not because the stones of that holy mountain were of fire flashing before them by reason of which they could not go up again and hallelujah was angry with them and repented of them because they had come down from glory and had thereby lost or forsaken their own purity or innocence and were fallen into the defilement of sin then mighty god Ahiah sent his word the messiah yeshia to jared saying these thy children whom thou didst call my children behold they have transgressed my commandment and have gone down to the abode of perdition and of sin send a messenger to those that are left that they may not go down and be lost then jared wept before ahiah and asked him mercy and forgiveness that he wished that his soul might depart from his body rather than hear these words from mighty god ahiah about the going down of his children from the holy mountain but he followed mighty god ahiah's order and preached unto them not to go down from that holy mountain and not to hold intercourse with the children of cain but they he heeded not his message and would not obey his counsel chapter twenty one jared dies in sorrow for his sons who had gone astray a prediction of the flood first one 
After this, another company gathered together, and they went to look after their brethren. But they perished as well as they. And so it was company after company until only a few of them were left. Then Jared sickened from grief, and his sickness was such that the day of his death drew near. Then he called Enoch, his eldest son, and Methuselah, Enoch's son, and Lamech, the son of Methuselah, and Noah, the son of Lamech. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them, and blessed them, and said to them, You are righteous, innocent sons. Go you not down from this holy mountain. For behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain, and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of mighty God Ahia's commandment. But I know, through the power of Ahia, mighty God, that he will not leave you on this holy mountain, because your children have transgressed his commandment, and that of our fathers which we had received from them. But, O oh, my sons, mighty God Ahia will take you to a strange land, and you never shall again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain. Therefore, my sons, set your hearts on your own selves, and keep the commandment of Ahia, mighty God, which is with you. And when you go from this holy mountain into a strange land, which you know not, take with you the body of our father Adam, and with it these three precious gifts and offerings, namely the gold, the incense, and myrrh. And let them be in the place where the body of our father Adam shall lay. Unto him of you who shall be left, my sons, shall the word of El Elohim come, and when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Then Noah said unto him, Who is left of us that shall be left? And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loins, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. Then Jared turned to his son Enoch and said unto him, Thou, my son, abide in this cave, and minister diligently before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life, and feed thy people in righteousness and innocence. And Jared said no more. His hands were loosened, his eyes closed, and he entered into rest like his father's. His death took place in the 360th year of Noah, and in the 989th year of his own life on the twelfth of Texas, on the, on the, sorry, on the sixth day. But as Jared died, tears streamed down his face by reason of his great sorrow, for the children of Seth who had fallen in his days. Then Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, these four wept over him, embalmed him carefully, and then laid him in the cave of treasures. They then rose and mourned for him forty days. And when these days of mourning were ended, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah remained in sorrow of heart, because their father had departed from them, and they saw him no more. Chapter 22 Only three righteous men left in the world, the evil conditions of men prior to the flood. Verse 1 But Enoch kept the commandment of Jared his father, and continued to minister in the cave. It is this Enoch to whom many wonders happened, and who also wrote a celebrated book. But those wonders may not be told in this place. Then after this, the children of Seth went astray and fell, they their children and their wives. And when Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah saw them, their hearts suffered by reason of their fall into doubt, full of unbelief. And they wept and sought El Elohim, highest mercy, to preserve them and to bring them out of that wicked generation. Enoch continued in his ministry before Ahia 385 years, and at the end of that time he began, became aware through the grace of Ahia that mighty God Ahia intended to remove him from the earth. He then said to his son, 
my son, I know that mighty God of high intends to bring the waters of the flood upon the earth and to destroy our creation. And you are the last rulers over this people on this mountain. For I know that not one will be left you to beget. Children only this holy mountain. Neither shall any one of you rule over the children of his people. Neither shall any great company be left of you on this mountain. Enoch said also to them, Watch over your souls and hold fast by your fear of mighty God Ahia and by your service of him and worship him in upright faith and serve him in righteousness, innocence and judgment, in repentance and also in purity. When Enoch had ended his commandments to them, Elohim Ahia transported him from that mountain to the land of life, to the mansions of the righteous and of the chosen, the abode of paradise of joy, in light that reaches up to heaven, light that is outside the light of this world. For it is the light of mighty God Ahia that fills the world, the whole world, but which no place can obtain. Thus, because Enoch was in the light of mighty God Ahia, he found himself out of the reach of death. And to mighty God Ahia would remain on that holy mountain, except those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were there forbidden that mountain, and none remained on it but those three men. And that's the end of book two of the book, The Forgotten Books of Eden, the story that goes over Adam and Eve, what happened at the beginning. Thank you for listening.